Hey everybody, it's Rob coming back at you with another video. I've promised this one for a good long time and, you know, life just got in the way. What we have here, Blue Burst, Jake E. Lee, Charvel, USA, Custom Shop Guitar. Um, and my cat in the background meowing because uh, she doesn't like the attention away from her. Okay, I have good, bad, and ugly with this instrument. And um, I have a couple things that I just want to get out of the way immediately. There is a difference between the body material and the body shape on this in the lavender with white. This has a poplar body. The lavender with white has ash. On this, the middle and the neck are direct mounted. The bridge is ring mounted. You do not have the route for the pick guard as you do on the white with lavender. Now I do want to check at my next string change, I promise to do this, I'll do a video too. On my white with lavender, I'll take the pick guard off and we can look inside and we can see how they routed it. Did they do you know a typical swimming pool or did they do slant, slant, straight? But, so that's one of the immediate differences. The body material is different, okay? Now, because there's no pick guard on this, on the back, you have a cover plate for the electronics. The cover plate is the um, aluminum type that Jackson uses on their products and that Charvel uses. And... Um, it's high quality. It's recessed. Uh, I, I don't know why more manufacturers won't put that time into it. Now let's just take a look at the bursting. I think it's pretty even all the way around. And I don't know how to do this because I record all my YouTube videos with my iPhone. But I guess there's a way I could put like images with it. And um, I have images of me playing this live where under different light, it just, it's phenomenal. So here is the real quick brief story on Jake E. Lee, the Blue Burst, and kind of his run with Charvel. Long story made short, Reader's Digest version. I'll try and get this done in under 30 seconds. Jake E. Lee did not have enough money to buy a Fender Stratocaster. Jake worked at a music store, told his parents that he had a job. They said, we can't pay you, the, the job being they, um, but you'll get a guitar. Jake played them all. He found one that didn't have a bar, and it sounded great. By bar, he means whammy bar. Okay. So he gets the guitar. It's a Sunburst hardtail strap. And at the time, he's living, I believe, in L.A. He has a roommate. The roommate works at the Charvel paint booth. And as a gift to Jake, because Jake felt like a loser having a vintage, then it wasn't vintage, but now it would be vintage, uh, Sunburst strap. So the roommate cut the big headstock down, made it the fender shape, and put um, lavender with white paint on it. So that's the story on how Jake started playing. So his first Charvel was not a Charvel. It was actually a Fender Stratocaster. All right, back on point here. So he's on his Aussie tour. He's doing well. He's getting ripped off heavily by Sharon and Aussie. Uh, he wants something that's his own. Well, everyone had these graphic guitars. I mean, look at the Queensryche guitars. Look at the um, uh, Rat guitars. You can see they all had the graphic thing covered. Uh, other guitar bands had that. He wanted something that looked good. And I quite frankly think brass, blue burst, it pops really, really well. Now, interestingly enough, personally, if you said Rob guitars blue, I wouldn't even look at it. But Jake's one of my favorite players, and I've wanted one of these forever. Um, as you can see, these are direct mounted pickups. So if you, know, if you lean on it, because, you know, sometimes you play, if you play finger, whatever, you'll get movement. This is ring mounted. Now, all right, so back on point with this, the story on it, I ordered the white with lavender last year sometime, so 2019, and then the commie cough came into play, the Charvel Custom Shop shut down, and, uh, you know, God bless it that nothing happened to the, the folks working there, but then uh, the orders were delayed. In the meantime, I came across this. I call it the Valentine. It was made in March of this year, or February, I'm sorry, February of this year, very end of February, and uh, it shipped to the dealer. The dealer sold it. The person returned it. They couldn't sell it as brand new, even though it was through an authorized dealer, which brings me to the ugly. I want to get the ugly out of the way first. 
So the headstock, as you'll see, there's no adjustment. The truss rod adjustment is there. So you can either screw up your finish take or take the neck off. Well, I take the neck off. It's a pain in the ass. So I get the guitar, and when I get it, it's all sorts of wrong. Um, the setup sucks. Just everything sucks about it. And the dealer took like three weeks to ship it to me. I was just bummed out. I bought it at the very end of May. So that tells you all the longer this was on a shelf. It was made this year. It was sold. The manufacture date was end of February. It was sold to a store. The store sold it to a person. The person returned it. I bought it. I got a nice discount because it was not brand new. But the problem that I ran into was even though it was an authorized dealer and even though I'm the purchaser, since I'm not the original purchaser, you get no Charvel warranty. So this is a fair warning to anybody. If you're buying B stock, which this is what this would be considered, or a customer return, Charvel will tell you to go F yourself on a warranty claim. Okay, what warranty claim did I have? Remember that truss rod I pointed to right here? I played a show on the 4th of July, and uh, I have a very heavy pick attack. I use a very heavy pick. Uh, this is one of my custom picks here. You can see it's very thick. Let's see if I can get that focus. And I don't know if I can do this while I'm holding the phone, but you know, my pick attack would be, you know, very aggressive, um, tight, but aggressive. And uh, some of that comes from some of the groups I play in, the uh, tunings we play in. I use real thick strings. You got to hit them harder. Um, I'm a personal, I personally prefer nines. Uh, I think that's a perfect gauge for sound and playability on most scales. But in some of the bands I cover in, I can't do that. But anyway, so I break a string, which is very, very rare. Um, and it's the only way that I found this out. Thank goodness it actually happened. I'm playing the show. I break the string. Bang. It's an A string. And I was playing nines in E flat. Well, when I restrung it, I did not mean to do this. It was just stupidity. I put 11s on it because that's what I use in one of the other groups when I play in DGC FAD. Well, what happened was your neck does this. It pulls forward. Okay, so when you have the same string tension and the truss rod's neutral, okay, and you lower the tuning, the neck will do this pull. If you increase the string gauge and keep the same tuning, the neck does this and use the truss rod to counterbalance that. Well, what happened was I ran into a situation where I had terrible action. Well, as you can see now, I have it nice and low. Well, I went to adjust the neck and there was no more room. So the truss rod nut was buried, meaning that when they installed this, they buried the nut all the way and that was the quote zero position. Now, if you look at this, this is a repair order. I paid a private luthier to do what is called a truss rod reset. What is that? That's when they take the neck, they put blocks that they notch for the strings. That way your strings don't put dents in the frets. They put four or five of those on the fretboard. They put a straight edge, usually steel or aluminum, across the entirety of the top. They loosen the truss rod nut. They put the string at, or I'm sorry, the guitar at tuning tension. They put the a call on the neck underneath to hold it. And when they do that, switching hands here. So when they do that, they put that call there and they put a clamp on that top and that kind of resets the position. So I paid a private luthier to take care of that for me. Now the dealer, when I called them up, I said, Hey, uh, we got a slight problem. And they're like, what's that? You know, we watched your live videos. You playing it out live. Everything looks good. I said, yeah, everything was good until I broke a string. And I found out I have no trust rod adjustment. So I live in Pennsylvania, which means hotter than hell summers and colder than hell winters. And you have to have your truss rod. Well, the luthier fixed that. The dealer compensated me. Charvel told me to go fuck myself. And I have to be honest with you. This is a $2,799 guitar, brand new. Add tax to that. For Charvel to just to shit on me, I'm really upset.
as a repeat Charvel customer, I have this model. I have the white with lavender. I have a reproduction. I have several Jackson soloists. I have several Jackson dinkies. I have several USA Fenders. I'm a loyal customer of the goddamn brand. And just for them to be like, no, nope, uh, you are not the original owner. The warranty doesn't preclude you. So um, have a good day. You know, good luck. Change your gauge of strings and, um, you know, go, go to hell. Bum me out. Okay, so back to the guitar. This is specifically the guitar. Let's pretend I didn't have the neck issue. Oh, one, one more quick thing to point out. Uh, if you see this case, this case is just an SKB case. Uh, it's a plastic case with the, uh, the ATA flight hinges on it. The reason I use these on these guitars is because the cases that came with the guitars are too damn, quote, nice to take out. Now, they're Charvel Custom Shop cases. They're made out of real thin plywood. And then when you do that, the problem is, you know, you bust up the Tolex, you expose the wood, and they don't offer, in my opinion, as much protection as the polystyrene with the plastic. Plus, you know, have you ever loaded or unloaded at a, um, a bar when it's raining? Or if you have to throw your guitar in an airplane, you have the TSA locks on this. Okay, so back to the guitar. What are the main differences between this and white lavender? White lavender is called SoCal body. This is called a Sandemus body. The edges are not as round as you would see on the SoCal body. Now the main difference per Charvel is that SoCal means uh, pick guard, Sandemus means no pick guard. The Jakey Lee one is a special example because it has no pick guard, but it doesn't have the same Sandemus rounding. They took the original blue burst that Jake had and he gave it to a friend as a gift. Here, here you go. Here's an awesome piece of uh, music history. I'd like to be that friend. Um, but he gave him that guitar. They borrowed it. They took all the measurements. So this is an exact replica of that vintage Charvel, 100% exact replica according to Charvel. I've never played the original, so I sure as hell don't know. Okay, now, spec-wise, DiMarzio SDS, SDS, Seymour Duncan JB. Now, you've probably seen Seymour Duncan JBs before, and they say Seymour Duncan. This one doesn't. Why? It's an S, uh, what is it, SWD custom they changed the magnets from Alnico 5 to Alnico 2. I'm not sure if I have the order right. If I don't, it's just vice versa. The original JB was a 2. Now it uses a 5. Um, the white with lavender is a 5. This is a 2. I'm not sure exactly what it means. And different Charvel will not tell me what the response difference is. And Seymour Duncan has not responded to three emails, three Instagram things, and a Twitter thing. Now, minor great. Let's just point this out. Put even pressure straight down on the strings. They don't line up. They don't use a trim bucker on this. They use standard space. That doesn't mean anything. It just, it's an aesthetic thing. Now, the bridge on this is solid brass. I love how it tarnished up real nice just from, you know, where my hand sits on it when I play. Um, if you look at the ones Jake, the white with lavender that Jake is using, he's using this bridge, but with different color, uh, different coating. Jake's guitar that he's currently using also has 22 frets and a tone knob on the white with lavender he's using live. So the white with lavender you get from... Uh, Charvel actually isn't what Jake is using live right now, but this is about this guitar, not that guitar. 22 frets. Nut spacing, 1 and 5 eighths inch, and it's a phenolic, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, material nut. Now, I brought something up with me. So this is my digital caliper, and I had to be careful with this because I um, the battery is almost dead and I have to get another one out. But if we take a look, let's see if I can get that in there, 43.55 millimeters is the spacing of the white with lavender. This one, all right, I'm going to have a hell of a time doing this with one hand. 
as you can see, there's movement. It can rock. Give me one second here. Let's kind of angle this and pull this in tight. Sorry, I'm, my production quality here is awesome. So let's get these ends together. 40.33 millimeter. See that, the spacing. So this has a more narrow string spacing. And, you know, that's either good, it's either bad, it, it depends on what you like. I'll be honest with you, I did not know that it actually had that. Uh, I couldn't tell a difference to me personally. It was not until someone pointed it out to me that it was uh, different. Okay, same string tree, same tuners, but the buttons are different. It's still a maple neck. Still a rosewood board. The frets are medium jumbo. Now there is a difference between this fret and the fret on the white with lavender. The white with lavender, according to Charvel, even though it's a medium jumbo, this is a medium jumbo 6130. The white with lavender is a medium jumbo that more resembles a Gibson. This is a 6130 in its true Dunlop form. Now, the guitar itself, here's the thing um, you have to think about with it. It has the same neck profile. I mean, I bet if I took, aside from the, the size difference, I mean, it's a speed neck. Look at that. You know, it's not, it's not fat at all. It's not a Strat neck. It plays great. It sounds great. It has the skunk stripe like you would expect. You know, it has the back plate with the, the plastic rubber plate underneath it. You know, everything's the way it's supposed to be on this. Now, a quick note. Um, neither of my Jakey Lees have the thing on the back that say shit about the Fender trademark logo headstock, blah, blah, blah. All right. But back to this. So playability wise, they play the same. Is it worth it to get the more expensive one? My short answer is yes. And my long answer is yes. And also no for both. Why is that? Jake's known for the blue burst. But he's mainly known for the white one, you know, with the lavender hue. I played this out. Nobody realizes it's a Jakey e. Lee model. They think that it's some sort of left-handed shit because I have this. And I'm thinking, why do you think this is left-handed, you idiot? My controls are up here. My input cable's here. Duh. You know, but they have, I don't know, maybe this Hendrix thing in their head. But the the guitar, to me, the white with lavender is the true Jakey e. Lee. And quite frankly... If they made the white with lavender with 22 frets, I would have probably not bought this. Had the Charvel Custom Shop not closed down, I probably wouldn't have bought this. Um, you know, I'm getting older, and I want the shit that I like, so I bought it. The difference is, the bridge is thicker, it's brass, the nut's different, the pickup's different, the cutout's different. The neck on this is more narrow. Both have a 25 and a half inch scale length neck. I think that covers pretty much everything on it here. So let's just do a quick, and I really need to figure out a way to do some sort of sound recording with this shit because I really don't know what I'm doing. But here you go. And yeah, my fingerprints are all over it. I buy my guitars to play them. I'm not a hoarder. I don't buy stuff like that guy from the, the England place to inflate the price, you know, uh, Essex or no sex. I, I can't remember what you call him, but I buy my stuff to play it. So if I buy it, I play it out live. It's for real used. I'll almost turn the camera on you here. Let's flip this over to the back just so you can get a view of it. Okay, let's go back to the case. All right. So it cost me over 150 bucks to have the neck truss rod readjusted. I would have done it myself, but the store said, hey, we know you know how to do it yourself, but 
you know, for validity, we want you to go to a tech. So that's why I went to a, a different tech, one that I trust and one that actually I've done a lot of work with for, and he's done a lot of work for me too. Um, I use this guitar live. It sounds awesome. It's a monster. And I got to be honest with you. I really don't care for middle pickups because uh, they get in my way. But the tonality that you get with these, it's just really unique. And that reverse slant, I think Jake was on to something or is on to something. You get the bite from the bass strings. You get the, the girth of the treble strings. I think that if you can find one of these that is reasonably priced, you should buy it. I think that if it's between this and the white one and you're paying full retail, the white one's the better buy. However, the difference is the pickup in this is upgraded. The bridge in this is upgraded. So, and, you know, the, the body would. But other than that, you know, it's essentially the same guitar. And what I would suggest is try them both out, see what you like. More narrow nut spacing on this. Um... And that's really it. I mean, that's that's all there is to it. I should have put them both on a scale and told you what one's heavier than the other one. Uh, I think this one's actually heavier than the Ash one. And then, you know, just play them and see what you like. But if you have a chance and the price is right, pick it up. All right, take care.